Hello, this is Francis from McCaffrey's Crafts, and today I thought I'd make just a quick video because we're nearly upon now the uh, the, the cutting season for for Blackthorn. Um, we've had two very cold nights now in a row. There was some frost last night, and there was quite cold the night before. Uh, temperatures were dropping to about five to seven degrees there in the mornings, and I see the the leaves are finally starting to, to, to look the right color and starting to turn off as the, the, the sap is leaving the trees now and be retreating kind of into the roots. So I'd say we're about like, in Ireland anyway, about, about a week from, from cutting now. If this kind of continues a bit and just stays for a while and the, the, this kind of cold weather that's coming in, um, this could be the, the beginning of the, uh, the, the cutting season. And for all of you guys that, that didn't have the patience and have been cutting for the last few weeks, you know, you're you're going to see your sticks crack or, or you're going to have to season them for way, way longer. So lesson learned that that's your education, lads. Ha <laughs> ha. All I can do is laugh because I told you not to, but you still went out and did all your cutting. I know you did. Don't lie to me because I saw your messages and you, you sent me loads of messages about how great you're cutting and you did this and you did that, even though I was like, why are you cutting now? So calling you guys out, you know, as a, as a, as a lesson to say you shouldn't have been cutting yet, like not in Ireland anyway, because uh, it's just not, not the right time. And um, another thing too is like really, I keep getting all of these requests from people to that want me to go cutting with them and show them everything, even in Ireland. Like I got my third request there last night from a guy who wanted me to, to go cutting with him as well. But like, you know, there's there's a few kind of issues with doing that at the moment. Um, For one, we're in level three uh, lockdown in Ireland of a five level structure. And what that means is I cannot leave my county, my area. So I'm in County Kerry, which has the least, I think, amount of COVID cases in, in Ireland at the moment compared to, to, to all the other counties. Um, but yeah, so like I, I can't really, you know, um, uh, do that. And also like, you know, the, the, some of the distances that they want me to travel, like, you know, one's not too bad. It's like about an hour away, but some want me to go two hours away and one wants me to go four hours away to drive up to him, cut for the day, show him how to do everything. And, you know, like I, I honestly, I'm a one man type of business here, so I can't, you know, take a day, day off. And it's it's a long way to go when I have a plentiful source of black thorn within, you know, within a nice 30 minute driving, uh, driving um, uh, rate here. So that's, that's kind of like, you know, what's what I usually kind of like to, to do anyway, is just kind of stay in kind of my local, local area. But yeah, it's just, it's just weird. Like this year now, I've got that three requests in the space of about 10 days of all people basically like wanting me to teach them how to do everything, you know, in, in by inviting me to, uh, to, to, to go with them along and stuff like that but look it's it's um uh when i go cutting like it's only me or my dad or a family member like you know there's safety issues as well like i wouldn't want to be responsible for for you getting injured and as i said with with all my videos you will get injured welcome to the world of black torn black torn and injuries they're they're you know they're, they're part and parcel of it so it's uh it's not a profession there like like i could you know even employing someone to go cutting and stuff like that like you'd be fraught with you know injuries and 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 different things as well because you're going into these weird like you, you guys don't really fully understand like you might see a little a handy little black torn bush that you've been watching and you think it's easy and you might get a few easy sticks and you think ah yes but that's not how it works lads it's it's not as easy as that um, black torn for the sticks as you go out and go out and you have to get them more in quantity is you know it's like how do you say like drilling for oil or something like that like you have a few easy oil wells and stuff but then you have the ones in, in the more treacherous conditions to get the, the best best kind of oil or what out so it's a bit like that now with with black torn so look again i'm just kind of letting you guys know that like you know you're 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 just like even guys have been cutting for the last month or so like and the temperatures have still been been quite high here in ireland you know you just you know the one thing i i've echoed in this channel over and over and over again is patience you know you gotta have you gotta have patience with this business you cut the sticks at the right time of the year you wait you season them correctly there's no quick ways to, to black torn money like you know all, all, it's like there's a bit of what i've noticing now since covid is there's a bit of a gold rush you know going on around black torn you know everyone thinks 
this is what they're going to do you know they've, they've you know seen the movies and you know they're 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 thinking of like you know all that money with the black horn but it's not that it's a hard going job uh you know like you'll you'll you know the more and more you're going to watch this channel with me uh you're going to see you know it takes time to do it it's a lot of work involved um it's a lot of physicality to it um I'm still trying to figure out how to record this this kind of season because I usually just quick my phone like this time more like my day is so busy and so structured like I have my day organized like military precision I'm a bit kind of OCD like that I said from this hour this 30 minutes I do this task this this task and if I don't finish a task within that time zone I have to drop it and move to the next task the next task and again I have like three three kind of kids that I have to kind of uh, look after as well um so that's that's kind of not because I look after them like full time and then I have to uh, make sure they are looked after as well. Then back to the black drawn. So, you know, I, I have my day quite, quite structured. So I don't have too much time to sit down and edit the videos like like these, you know, guys that are professional YouTubers and stuff like that. This is just pure amateur YouTubing at your your rawest core. Uh, so, yeah, I just to figure out like how to hold the camera and set it up and leave it, you know, it'll probably be easier like to. When I'm like digging up a root ball, that's easy because I can just hold the camera and I can show you around the root and I can kind of cut it because like digging out a root ball is, is actually a good video because um like it can take fucking up to 30 minutes to do and you have to be very careful because the roots run all in different directions and it'd be kind of interesting for you guys to see that as well and um, because you you really have to be careful because sometimes you're cutting in different ways and you think you have it and you, you, you go to yank it to pull it out and you mess up the handle you you crack the handle or you split a certain way or you know so you have to be very careful with taking up those those um those root black thorns and they're kind of tough to do and uh you know it's yeah but the thing is those root ones they're beautiful handles but remember like the trunk doesn't have as many like knuckles on them as well so like some people want they want it all they want the root handle they want the knuckles they want it really thick as well like you know you, it's you, you'll understand more and more about this black turn business as as you come with me on this journey that I'm taking you with since I decided to kind of like let you guys into to my life here on YouTube and uh, the cutting season this year will be your first step in the education you probably need to go through about three seasons with me to kind of like you know understand what's what's going on and uh, you know like I, I make mistakes too. I, I'm I'm not perfect. Like you know, it's easy to sit here and say, "Do this, do that. Be careful. Be this." You know, I'm I'm you know human. I'm prone to mistakes. I'm prone to to getting tired or agitated or or you know like like things on your mind as you're cutting sticks and stuff as well. So like I'm I'm my victim of my own advice and on many instances. That's why I kind of I suppose come off as a bit of a preacher here telling you guys to be careful and stuff. It's just cuz uh cuz I've learned the, the the hard way on that. And uh you know, like it's fun finding a stick and everything, but like, you know, sometimes you just after you've been doing the cutting for for a month or two, like most guys they love it cuz it's new. I love cutting the black thorn. It's great. It's like I hear all all of these new noobs comments from all of these new guys. It's just like I just have to take, I find it funny on, on, on a certain level and a more of a dark humor side of things because I do like a bit of bit of dark humor from, from time to time. It's it's quite funny. And you see these guys like, you know, they're having a clue. But I was like that too. So I'm not like putting putting guys down. But like, you know, then what what I find, well, here, what, what I find the, the funniest about, about new guys is that they've usually been cutting black tarn for a month and then they're an expert. They're on every group. They're advising other people. They're telling them how they've been doing it for years and stuff. Well, I know they've only just taken it up for a month ago because they, you know, they've only been contacting me for a year, trying to ask me what to do or, or like what what saws they need or different things like that. But um, you know, it, it's like at the end of the day, like it's it's not really that important. Like it's just like funny that you know it's just how life is. Like you know, you'll get a guy and you know he'll learn something for five minutes and he's an expert and stuff like that and. You know, but like, there's there's no harm in that. Like, it's just you know, someone just is is just over. It's to do with overconfidence. Like, they just get really overconfident and think they know it all. Um, I'm still learning, and I'm learning all the time, and I don't know it all. And no matter how old I get, 
I'm going to keep that kind of philosophy that, you know, you're always learning new things. There's always better ways to do things. Um, sometimes you get your own way and your own habit. There's always a better way to do things as well. But like there's costs associated with it. There's time associated with it. Um, you need space and different things. So like, you know, I have some issues with, with spacing in terms because I, I like trying to store things and trying to get, so I don't have space for a lot of these big machinery things that everyone kind of expects that I have. Like, you know, if, if you guys really knew how I work, it's in a very kind of primitive type of type of way, like with saws, with sandpapers, you know, different things like that. Like I have a few little, little things as well that I kind of use, but nothing like, you know, fantastic as well. I think I've tried to need to manage you guys' expectations. You think I have this huge black torn factory that I'm like churning them out like the whole time. I am your classic example of, you know, an initial hobbyist who just figure out how to make this a business and i'll probably in time do a little series as well about how to go from being a hobbyist stick maker to being a professional stick maker because yeah that's actually quite a good video now that i think of it see that's on these ramblings i just get thoughts the whole time and then it kind of leads from one topic to the other so so that's that's good now so i must remember to do that as well and um, maybe a little series or a long chat about how if you're a hobbyist stick maker how do you take the step to do it um this it's quite it, you have to be careful as a minefield because like when you're a hobbyist and you're kind of making sticks when you start to sell them um, sometimes like you know you'll you'll get reported to the tax office or something like that you know by other like stick makers and stuff like there's it's you know it's it's there's there's some sound stick makers out there but there's there's some stick makers as well that they don't like you encroaching on their, their territory and they see you selling as well like you know you'll they'll be like you know given filling out that that form to to, to let people know that you're you're working and stuff which is is bad for them like you know everyone needs to get going with the, the sticks it's like you know at like at the end of the day i don't really care who sells sticks or what they're selling or anything like you know if you make a good stick it's going to sell that's plain and simple. I make good sticks. I like to believe I do. Um, my customers seem to, to give me good ratings on, on the sticks. And as long as you make good sticks, people like you, they'll tell people and they'll grow. And it's it's as simple as that. Like you don't need, like the first thing here, just I'll finish this video on, on one other piece of advice is like the first like piece of advice, you know, I'd give to these hobby stick makers is don't care what everyone else is doing. Like you, you don't, do your business based on someone else's, like say, oh, this guy is doing this, then I must do this. You find your own groove, you do your own thing, um, hardly ever look at the competitors. Like, you know, I might look at them maybe twice a year just to see how much they're selling their sticks for or something like that, just to say, right, you know, has there been like a huge like correction or pullback on what these guys are charging? But like, you know, when the amount of work goes into it, and I kind of know the costs of what you have to pay with the taxes and with the shipping, with the, the online payment gateways, with the commissions. So there is a kind of minimum level or threshold that you have to kind of sell black torn within or else you can't can't do it. And like I always kind of operate in that kind of like threshold area. So I'm, I, I don't really need to check up on my competitors like all the time of what they're doing. They're selling their sticks like for, for too much or for, for too little, that's their choice. I know this market pretty well, I've studied it. I know about what costs are associated. I know to make a business. I know how much people are willing to pay. I know if I go too high, what price people aren't willing to pay. I've, I've tested all of this out like over the years. And uh, yeah, sorry, these, these ramblings tend to, to go on. I just kind of get these kind of thoughts and run from, from one topic to another. I must go back and watch some of these videos because like sometimes I want to actually make a whole video about some of these kind of random thoughts that I have. So going back to originally what I was starting this video is just saying uh, cutting season is coming soon, about a week or two away. And uh, okay, I'll leave you on that. Bye bye.